All right. My headphones on. Okay. So, uh, this morning, I beat the world record time for Doom VFR. Now I'm gonna just. Turn off the tutorials here. Oh wait, what? Oh, what? It was there for a second, it said Ultra Nightmare, but... Weird. I think it did anyway. Unless I clicked on Ultra Violence one by accident. I think uh, that's weird. Maybe I could have kept going with my ultra violence campaign. Anyway, uh, did I turn the tutorials up? No. Here we go. Okay, tutorial of start campaign. Let's put it on easy, which is what I ran the speed run on this morning. It's the only the only other the only two categories are or currently, maybe there'll be more at some point, um, but it was just Ultra Nightmare or any difficulty other than Ultra Nightmare, so I thought might as well do it on easy. Today. This part can't really do anything, but can just spin the camera, or you can do the switch walking, oh you can't switch walk in this section? Because the, what the hell? switch camera button doesn't work in a second. So you can just spin the camera and move your head on real life, and you'll move. So, like, move. Turn the camera, move. Turn the camera, move. Turn the camera. And you see this guy here. He just despawns in a second. There. <laughs> And now this guy's gonna charge after the doors open. The doors are gonna glitch first for a second. And you see, the elevator stays here, and it just looks from the inside as though the elevator is moving. And then the doors open, and roars, and he charges forward. And that's where you start the run. That's when he roars. So that's when I started my timer. That's when he roars. Um, so then, mission's completed. What a hard mission, right? This mission, it doesn't seem to matter. Where am I? Like, until the tutorial section actually oh starts. God, I'm, I'm like, dead, I thought maybe you have to look at, look around not. and trigger stuff, but I don't think so. Something must have activated the cognitive transfer protocol. Just this hasn't been out. done since... Hayden. Time to get some answers. Time to get some answers. Powers down. Powers we'll down. start there. I'll start there. There has to be a combat chassis somewhere. That would work. Good timing. Good timing. All right. <coughs> so we thing. can't teleport yet until he says the thing. Now we can. So you'll see, I can move the arc any which way around because the teleport arc. Because it's linked to my controller, not to my headset. If I was using a different controller, that might not be the case. But with this controller, it's linked to my headset. And I teleport from wherever... Or, sorry, it's linked to my controller. And I teleport from wherever my controller is. You can see that's where the arc starts. And you can see it's where it ends up. So if I put the arc down here, I can't teleport up there. But And you see there's an invisible wall. There's clipping here. E e even though, like... It looks like it's just touching invisible, right? It's just stopping. There's no wall there. But there is still a clipping because it's part of this wall here. The clipping extends a little bit out from where the wall is. And you'll notice that more, there's some thinner walls and some thicker walls, some very thick walls. And you can see even here, there's a bit of a layer here. Like this little blue line here uh, going along here and then down and along that kind of extends from the wall and I guess that's where the clipping no yeah 
Let me move back a little bit. No. No, the clipping must be from the floor up here, I guess. The wall, you can see, like if I stick my face through, uh, and you can see the beam going through the wall. But you see, if I get too close with my head, the beam disappears. But if I put my head over here, and then I point my controller at the floor in the room I'm in currently, you can see I got the teleport here. And then if I just move the controller into this other room, you can see the beam is going now through the wall. But then there's another invisible wall on the other side of this wall. That's what I mean about thicker walls. But you can see then if I point up here, then it goes over that part. So the angle here is really important as well as the position of the controller as well as like if I'm standing back here I can't see where the arc is going so it's going to be harder to do any of this. But it might still be possible. So you start off the tutorial over here. You walk over here. That's when you get the teleport. You can teleport directly to that platform. And then you can see I come over here. I do it actually over on this wall. And you see, the roof where we started is actually now not that much high up from where we are standing right here. So, if I put my beam over here, if I look up, you see, I look up, I'm still holding the teleport button, but when I look up, the beam disappears. And I look down, it's still gone, but if I press the teleport button again, you can see my left hand clenches, that means I'm pressing the teleport button. So, I press the teleport button, I keep looking down, and I can move this any which way I want and the beam just doesn't disappear. If I put my head forward it disappears. If I look up it disappears. But as long as I stay looking down with my head slightly into the wall I can move the controller around and I can teleport through this wall anywhere there as long as there's somewhere to teleport to. And why I mentioned the roof over there I can't see it if I'm looking down but I can point my controller up there and you'll see the beam goes green. That means my beam is lined up onto the roof of that room over there and when I let go of the teleport button I teleport onto that roof. And then from this roof it's pretty easy. <laughs> I've never actually been into that room with a big circle. I don't know what that is. But you can see these are all the different rooms of the tutorial. And then there is the uh, what's it called? The the hub, the ARC hub. Uh, United, or no, what is it? I forget what it's called. The UAC hub. So from here on this roof, you can teleport all the way up to that roof, and then you can either teleport over there. But the fastest way I found to get to the upgrade thing is to teleport over onto this roof. And then from here, one more step gets you onto the roof of that exit over there. And then I can't teleport through this wall, but I can teleport up to here. And I still can't teleport through the wall. But if I walk up to the wall and put my controller through it, then I can. You can see where the beam starts, that's where my controller is. So if I have the if I have my controller close to me, then it's not going to work. But if I push it through this invisible wall into that room, then I can teleport into that room. As long as my controller is in that room, I can teleport to that room. And as long as I can see where I'm teleporting to. The second part maybe is not necessarily ne necessary. Now this wall is a bit different. Uh if you, I'll show you what can happen. Uh, well, how am I going to show that now? Oh, here. So I'll do the same thing. Look down. I'll point the controller up, and I teleport to the roof. And now I'll show you what happens. What happens if I uh, go over here? 
And now... Oh. What if I... How am I gonna... Make this happen? I don't know if I can force it to happen. But sometimes what happens is you go like... Like you can see... Well, you can't really see it. But it, it, this thing is going up. This barrier thing is going up. And you can get trapped in there sometimes and like brought up, but then you can just, again, clip through the wall to get back down. So, uh, f yeah, for this barrier, um, if I'm, if I'm too close to the barrier, again, like with my face, then I can't teleport through it. So you gotta be standing back a little bit w with your headset, have, bring your headset a little bit away from the wall and press the teleport button and for this one like you can see again the the beam starts where my controller is so if I push the beam into this invisible wall by pushing my controller through the wall, invisible wall then the teleport icon appears and I can teleport into that Now I take the time dilation upgrade here. On uh, Ultra Nightmare I would start with Chassis Integrity, but... Uh, is there a way I can force this to do the thing? Probably not. But, I, but, but the time dilation is good for one of the skips later on. Uh, so... You see, like, if I go, if I walk into this invisible wall, I get this message, return to play area. So, then if I, if, if that happens, like, you're not going to be able to teleport through the wall. Uh, you can, if you see that message and you, and you plus the 180 flip button, then you'll still see the return to play area message. And you see my hands are stuck on that invisible wall because my in-game positioning is still there um, and I also can't teleport from here you can see my left hand there is moving that means I should be pressing the teleport button but not getting the teleport beam but if I come back into where I'm supposed to be then I can just point my controller through the wall. See, right now it's on this side of the invisible wall, and I put my controller into the other side of the invisible wall. I'll let go. The same here. Have my controller here, put it in there. Need to get the main and then the same thing with these doors here. Now, uh, on PSVR, on Ultra Nightmare you cannot do this, you have to complete this section pretty much normally, uh, because there's no restart checkpoint, but if you're playing on PSVR and you're on any difficulty other than Ultra Nightmare, there's checkpoints. So what I can do... Oh, I didn't mean to press the grenade button. Oh. What I can do is, again, the same thing. Press teleport, put my controller through, and you see if I put it too far through, the beam goes away. But if I just tilt it into there, the beam doesn't go away. And I can teleport into there. And then I just pick this up. Just need to get this back to the And you can see that uh, little red icon means it's saving. That means I just hit the checkpoint when I picked that thing up. So now if I load the checkpoint, that's gonna take me back to the, um, the room we started. Uh, no, sorry, it's gonna take me to, uh, what's that room called? 
this room. I forget what this room is called right now. Uh, operations. It's going to take me back to operations. Um, no. If I were to come to this room, in this version of the game, if I were to come to this room without having loaded the checkpoint after having skipped turning on the power and fighting all those enemies, I just went directly to the teleport piece and I picked it up, but I didn't load the checkpoint and I came here, there would not be an option to put the piece into the teleporter and so you basically soft lock but you're not really because you can just load the checkpoint and then that puts you into this state which is where the teleporter is ready to accept the repair part so you can just interact with the teleporter and then stand over here where the waypoint is so that as soon as it appears if I get into that transfer station He'll save the dialogue and activate the teleporter. There's a couple other things you can do here. We only built a few of the accumulators. Hacking into Hayden's computer is probably the best way to find one. You can turn on the power up until that point. Now I cannot turn on the power anymore, I think. Actually, even maybe once I picked up the part? No, I think, I think you can turn on the power until you've interacted with the teleporter. The other things you can do, you can go into this room again and just move in my controller. You can see I just point it into the room and if I push too far the beam disappears. If I put my head through the beam disappears. I just have to point it through and don't push all the way and point it to the floor on where I want to teleport to. So then I could activate this test fire. It worked. And then I can activate this test fire. But if I do that, it's going to break the mission that I'm currently on. So I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to keep going and, and show you what else happens in the rest of the run. Because, uh, yeah, if, you, if I were to do that and it, uh, it, it kind of breaks the game, you'll still see this thing here. But when you walk through it, actually, I can, still, I can show you that, actually. We can, we can do that. Let's do it. So we're going to test fire this one as well. Um, what's going to happen? Actually, it shouldn't soft lock, I think. It should... Because we already had the teleporter working, if we had test fired before we repaired the teleporter, then we would soft lock. But because we already have the teleporter working, even though he shows up this ravine substructure map, we're not going to teleport to the ravine substructure. We're going to teleport still to the uh, UAC administration even though he's shown us this but what this is gonna do later on we're not gonna have to test fire the BFG cannons again that parts already done so when it gets to that part that is gonna be done we're, we're gonna skip that but it, it it adds on time into this mission so it, by, it doesn't really save time like it saves a little bit of time later on but I don't think you make up for it with the amount of time you add on in this mission uh, you, you can try testing around with that, but I didn't think it was worth the amount of time. So, because, because uh, you just have to kind of wait for a while for him to say all this stuff. But we'll continue now, I'll go into the teleporter, and it should take us to UAC Administration. Yeah, there we go, UAC Administration. Oh yeah, Advanced Research Complex? Is that what the other place is called? The hub? ARC hub? I don't know what UAC stands for. Though. We need to get into Hayden's office to find an accumulator. Okay, Locate Argent Accumulator is the mission here. Um, no, this is where we start to notice there's some different kind of walls, like here. I can teleport through there pretty easy. There's the plasma cannon. 
and you see here this is where the uh, boss fight takes place um, and again like if I go too close and I see the return to play area it's gonna cancel out my teleporting so I gotta stay on this side of the wall with my headset and just point my controller through the wall and have it pretty close but not all the way through the wall because if it goes too far the beam disappears and as long as you see the green beam it means you're gonna go through the wall and there's the uh, machine gun is it? so these mobs I would just walk past them in uh, in the easier difficulty on Ultra Nightmare I would take them out because uh, uh, they can be kind of frustrating to deal with them when you're trying to do this and you don't want to take damage I might take out this, this one guy so he doesn't blow up if you walk over here but don't activate it then you can come over here and call the lift but I'm not actually gonna call the lift right now that's what I did in my run before uh, but what I want to just try because I noticed there's a waypoint on the other side of the elevator doors so I think the elevator is already there and the delay to open the door is just um, is just to make you fight these mobs but I think Oh, no, I'm, I'm wrong. There is a waypoint there, but the elevator is not there yet, so I guess you do have to call the elevator. And you can do that, like, while you're waiting for this chest to open as well. It's worth checking out. There's some other elevators that you can get onto early, but I guess this one, at the start of the game, it must be already up here. Um, so then I come through here, Excellent. clip through this wall again, and just point the controller through. It's not like we just leave accumulators lying around. This part you have to hack, it's pretty straightforward. If you uh, don't hack this terminal, the next level won't be unlocked. Like if you just go directly to the exit, which you can do. And you will, it will say the level's complete, but then when you get lost? back to get the, back to uh, the ops, lab. ops Lab, um, it won't have been completed, like you'll have to redo the level. So then at this part, apparently some people on PCVR have not been able to do this. Uh, you can see, like, well, like I can only walk up not quite all the way to the window and then like if I try and teleport from here it looks like oh no I can't teleport through this window it's sort of like you can see there's a bit of a break in the barrier there but and maybe that's part of the problem like if I'm over here more where it goes further back and I try to reach it's gonna be hard but if I take a step forward in real life and reach, uh, yeah, even then, I still cannot reach it. Uh, but in that case, what I could do is I can just move my head over while I'm rotating the camera or uh, do the s switch walk. As long as I do not see the return to play area message right there. So go back into the play area, and then when but when you're right up close to the wall without seeing that message, then you should be able to reach through the window and teleport as long as you as long as you don't reach too far, because then you your gun goes like like the same as the other as the other thing. If you put your gun too far through the wall you lose the teleport thing. So you gotta stay, make sure you have the beam, so like point it into the room you're in currently, and then, oh, 
point it into there and just move the gun through move the controller through slowly until you see it go green like and it has to be pointing at the ground too like if if I'm pointing somewhere that like there's no ground over there then I'm not going to be able to teleport there even even though you, I still have the arc if it's not green you're not going to go there so you got to have it somewhere it's going to go green somewhere you can teleport somewhere there's floor basically and then you should be able to teleport there from here you can just teleport to that floor and then again just reach through just with the controller not with my head I can reach through a little bit with my head but if I go too far I have to return to play area so just reach through with the controller and you should be able to teleport through and then the same thing here and you see it go green there and then at this part you can just take the exit here but I like the stuff here and grab an upgrade because it's kind of on the way and then just step on the exit And as soon as I step on the exit, I'll start mashing the uh, continue button to get to the next loading screen faster. A lot of spare parts in the ravine substructure. Uh, this part we have to go do the fire extinguisher. Oh no way! Wait, did I find a new skip? We're not doing the elevator. Are the fires already extinguished? No, the fires are still there. Can I pick up the extinguisher? Yeah. But can I take the portal also? And will it take me... Will I skip that fire extinguisher level? I just... I'm not sure if I've actually tried... Got this far after... Doing the test fire early. Like, I'm just gonna see now. Oh no, it does take me to Lazarus Labs. But it did skip the fire extinguisher section. That's interesting. Huh, so maybe there is, maybe it is actually worth doing the BFG cannons early if it's gonna skip uh, both of the next couple um, ARC hub sections. Oh yeah, so sorry, I should explain this a little more. So there's a bunch of enemies in this room. You can see the laser puzzle up here, but there's no way to interact with it yet. So if we go on the other side of the room from where the laser puzzle was, I'm not going to worry about the enemies here. They can hurt me a little bit, but not much on this difficulty. So I'm just going to walk all the way up to the wall, and then the same thing, just point my controller through the wall, point it at the floor, you can see if it's not in enough, it won't turn green. If I push it in too far, it goes out altogether. So you just gotta push it in until it goes green, and then let go. Grab the grenade launcher there, clip through this wall. For this one, I do put my headset forward a little bit but uh, not all the way through. Like I guess you can. I guess you can. On this way, but when you're coming back, it's kind of it can be trickier to get through this door. Uh, but it's kind of the same idea. Just you want to get your controller until it goes in in there far enough that it goes green, but not so far that your teleport beam goes away altogether. And make sure it's pointed at the floor, not at a wall. 
Now, you have to interact with this terminal to unlock the next level. As far as I know. Demonic presence at unsafe levels. Lockdown in fact. And then I'll also grab an upgrade from here. But at this point, now that I have the time dilation upgrades, I wonder is it just wasting time to grab the other upgrades? But I'll grab some ammo. And I'll upgrade the super shotgun. And there's a health machine there if you need health. I would have at this point upgraded my health if I was on the harder difficulties, but for AZ you have lots of health. The enemies do hardly any damage on this difficulty and health pickups are a lot bigger than they would be, I think, on the harder difficulties. So yeah, for this one you can see like I have to I have to reach my gun through kind of far to get the thing to go green and then if I go too far then it goes out so you want it to be pointing at the floor and then it's gotta go tr through far enough that it goes green but not far enough that it disappears altogether and you see there is not much of a window so I just gotta get it just perfectly lined up and then let go and you're through you see this guy is just gonna stay here he's stuck on an invisible wall now we can go through the invisible wall so I'm just going to teleport over him. And now we can do this laser puzzle up here, which as far as I know we also need to do this to unlock the next level. He's going to come and harass us. But I'm going to just ignore him and work on the puzzle. And then I'm going to go through this wall over here. It's another one, you have to move a little bit closer to the wall and then push your controller through until it goes until the beam goes green and then let go and the reason you can teleport through this wall is because right now I'll bring up the map and you can see we're actually we're not floating in midair we're above uh, the room that we started in actually right now uh, so so that's why we can stand here and uh, that room that we started in you can see is directly above where our next thing that we need is, which is the data pad, which we need to locate to complete this objective finite Olivia's data pad. So, to get, uh, oh, and the data pad will also unlock the exit of the level. So, to get to the data pad, the fastest way I've found is, I'll just close the map here. We're gonna teleport a little bit over here, get onto this corner and then either teleport or just drop down, either way it'll work. And you want to be on top of this door in between... Uh, oh, we don't appear on the map right now. But we're in, in, in between, th there's a... There's a hallway next to the room we need to be in, and we're just on the door in between the hallway and the room we need to be in. So I'm going to walk towards the, just push towards the room we need to be in. And you can see, uh, oh, I need to be a little bit more to my left, I think. Oh, okay, sorry, I got a bit turned around there. So, from over here should be the door to where we need to go. So I'm just going to uh, point my controller into that room. And you can see if I'm pointing to the floor in that room, then it'll go green. Anywhere that 
that it's not pointing at a wall. And as long, like there is an invisible wall here where the roof is, but it's at an angle. So as long as you push uh, your controller towards it, you should be able to uh, get your teleport to go through that invisible wall and into the floor in the room where we need to be. And then just teleport down there. And you can see we're right next to the data pad now where we need to be. We just teleported from above this doorway through that angled roof there, that uh, arch roof. Uh -huh. So you can hear the monsters spamming away up there. So we're just going to grab the data pad. If we went directly to the teleporter without the data pad, we would not be able to interact with this terminal to activate the teleporter. So that's why you need the data pad. Uh, and, and I think you need to hack the terminal upstairs and do the laser puzzle to unlock the next level. So now after we've done all that, we can just teleport down here and we've completed that level. And I'm not 100% sure about all the triggers, but this is just from what I found out. There might be some ways to skip some of the triggers that I haven't found yet. Um, but all the ways that I know to trigger the next things are what I'm going to explain. So... A lot of spare parts in the ravine substructure. I have to start there. Okay, so now it's sending me to the ravine substructure. So that early BFG test actually might save a decent amount of time. I didn't realize that until this exact stream. Like, I should have tested around with that a bit more. But. I guess this was as good a time as any to test it. At this part, uh, I usually will just try and teleport past all these to enemies. They won't do much damage. And then once you get into here, I grab this gun. I turn around and teleport up here, and then up here, and then up to the top there. If you can't get it to line up there, you can just teleport onto this ledge first and then teleport up there and then from here you should be able to get up to the top and then this is another spot where you just gotta push your controller through the wall until the light goes green and then let go now here you want to hang a right drop down and you're at the terminal which you need to access the next level so you're gonna hack the terminal don't worry about the monsters they can't get into this room as far as I know You'll see them through the window. Uh, that'll open up, a, so you can walk over there to activate that. Upgrade, then pick up this item which you need to unlock. The exit? Or no. I think you need, that's that, yeah, you need to hack the terminal and collect that item to repair the BFG cannon. Oh, he got in here, wow. Oh, I guess when I pick that up, it opens this door, so that's how he got in. So I'm just gonna do this upgrade quickly. And then we're going to take that uh, directly above where the part we picked up was. We're going to take that exit. So I'm going to grab this upgrade and teleport up there. And then I always grab this pickup. It gives you 200 health and armor. And then teleport over here, across here, just straight through here, and then left. And we're at the exit. Again, I would be smashing X as soon as I get to the exit to skip that screen and get straight to this loading screen. Now at this part we're going to have to repair the BFG. 
I think. Oh. Or we're gonna go do the BFG puzzle. Or I mean the uh, the laser puzzle, right? No, we're gonna repair the BFG, okay. So from the operations room where we started, just go out and to the left, and you'll see the piece needs to go in here, so just uh, press your interact button. This should do it. And then interact with the terminal here. And then again, you're supposed to wait, but we can just teleport through this door, and then it's one spot over to the right. And teleport into here. And we're gonna stand over in this waypoint. There's the waypoint. A simultaneous blast from the prototype should And that should activate the, the teleporter here. The safety systems are capping the energy output. So by test firing the should be able to access BFG the cannons the early. Control center. We skipped doing that later, and also skipped the fire extinguisher part. Although we might end up having to do that later, still I'm not sure. We'll find out soon. I can use, I can interact with the fire extinguisher and the fire is still there, to manage the power but I don't know engines. if I need to. Okay, so I grabbed a BFG, make sure you can see it's now on my left hand, it's right in the starting room on this level, which is pretty nice. Now if you come into this room, it's going to spawn in a wa wave of enemies here, and if you kill all the enemies, then it's going to um, unlock a little cutscene, and after that cutscene plays, then you can interact with the terminal there to open this door on the right. But because we can clip through walls, we're just going to teleport over to where that door is and teleport through the door. So again, just move the controller until it goes green and then let go. And then we skip that room. And then we're going to go over here and I'm going to upgrade the Gauss cannon. And there's some health and ammo if you need it. We're going to use the elevator. And then this part I like to spin around so I'm close to the door. And then you can actually teleport through the door before it opens. And if you're quick enough that can save you some time. But you got to bear in mind that that slows down time so you might think, oh, I got there before the doors opened. But maybe if you had not been slowing down time, the doors would have opened already anyway. It's hard to say. So, I'm going to upgrade my ammo here. There's a BFG ammo there. And there's lots in this room as well, uh, which you can use to fight the enemies in this room. But instead of fighting, the, I'm just going to, I don't like how big this gun is. I'm going to switch to the pistol here. That's better. So I'm just going to run through this level to the exit. You can see it from down here. It's where I'm pointing now. Um, so we're just going to run over to there and teleport through the door to get to the next elevator. And skip this room altogether. So it's the same, same deal. Uh, you're going to push the controller until the light goes green and then let go. And then we're in here, we can uh, interact with this elevator. And then again, I'll swivel over to where the door is. So as soon as we're in line with the floor, I can teleport through. The output is locked at 25%. Now from here, should be able to access the, the enemies the should not spawn in this room until we interact with the terminal up there, which we need to do to unlock the next level. The security There's also a chain gun in here if you didn't grab one earlier. Got to hack the terminal here. And then we can teleport down to the next elevator. Take this down to the next test chamber. I'm going to again swivel over in line with the floor and teleport through. 
And then the same deal here, there's a lot more BFG ammo to take out a lot more enemies, which takes a lot of time. So I'm gonna just run through here and up to the right to where the next elevator is to get back to the starting area. And then the same deal for this door, just hold teleport, put your controller towards the wall, and when it goes green, let go. If the room on the other side of the wall has not loaded in yet, you might not be able to teleport through there, or if there is no floor on the other side of the wall. So those are two things to keep in mind. There's one example of this that I can show might be actually back in the starting room. So we'll go there now, which is where we have to go anyways. I'm gonna swivel again over to the center of the door and teleport through. It doesn't have to be at the center of the door, I just find then you can see the room you're going into better. Now if we go close to where the door is, it's gonna open. But if you wanna grab this upgrade, just stay farther away from the door and hit the upgrade and the door won't open and you won't be attacked by the enemies that are on the other side of the door. And then at this point I'll upgrade my chassis, although I don't really need to. Um, but I might as well because we're here and I'm not trying to go fast particularly. Now at this part I'll show you another, uh, what I was just talking about, which is if the floor on the other side of the wall is not there. So if we come over to this door, you can see if I stick my head through there, uh, it it's not like, it's not fully rendered. Like there's floor, but it only goes out a little ways and then it, it's not there. So I don't think there's actually clipping on that floor. So if I try and teleport through, I don't think it's gonna work. Um, but yeah, that's just to show you where teleporting doesn't necessarily work, and it's if you can't see the floor you're teleporting to. No, at this point, if you interact with this, uh, or no, I don't, yeah, I don't think you even have to interact with this terminal. You don't even have to look at it. You can see, like, I think maybe when I walk near it, or maybe not, it might have just happened, but this door unlocked. Now at this point, there's a couple things you can do. Uh, there should be a whole horde of enemies right here on the other side of the store. And you can see, like, um, there's no enemies here right now. Uh, but that's because I did not complete the test chambers. So it does not load in these enemies. If I load the checkpoint right here, then I'll, I'll spawn in this room and the enemies will spawn here and it'll fix the mission. But what we can do instead of that because there are no checkpoints in Ultra Nightmare mode, so uh, to get past this room in Ultra Nightmare mode without fighting any enemies, what we can do is just go up these stairs here, left or right, it doesn't matter, and then above where the entrance is here, which I'll show you this on the map, you see there's floor in front of me now. There's a floor underneath where we are, so if I go through this wall, there's going to be a floor on the other side with a roof on it and we're going to teleport onto the roof of the floor below us that's on the other side of this wall in front of me. So I'll close the map here, we're going to go up to the wall, you see I'll look through and you can see there's, there's a room down there and there's a roof that we're going to teleport to. So I'm going to do the same thing, put my gun, teleport, push it towards the wall until it goes green. And I like to look through the wall a bit to know, but if you push your head too far through the wall you have to return to the play area. So put the teleport, look a little bit through the wall if you want to, to see where your arc is going. And you want to teleport into this area here, which is on the roof of the floor below, uh, above that entryway to the room we're in now. So we're going to teleport up there. And you can see this wall here in front. We can teleport on top of that as well. And then from here, I'll bring up the map again. You can see uh, the elevator is in the center of the room that I'm looking at now. The room that we were just in. And you see now the entrance, the entryway into that room is where we're above right now, where the uh, yellow icon on the map is. And you see uh, there's like, there's a, the, the roof that I'm standing on now has an edge that you can see uh, the edge I'm talking about is right here. 
So I'm gonna stand over here on this, the edge of this wall of the roof and the wall. And now there's a hole in front of me here. There's also clipping though uh, from that floor in that room. So if you touch the clipping, you're gonna lose your forward momentum. It might even push you backwards and you're not gonna be able to get to the elevator which is underneath the room in front of us. And now it's important that we grab the time dilation upgrades. You can see the time dilation counter is ticking down. It's, uh, that's where I'm pointing right now here on the left of the screen. There's the time dilation meter. I don't know if you can see it on the stream even, but uh, it's ticking down now. Uh, and we need the time dilation basically to land the jump that we're about to make. You see it just ticked out. So it'll last for a decent amount of time and then it'll take a while to fill back up. So ideally, if you're speed running, you want to have most of your time dilation still saved up by the time you get here so you don't have to let it refill but you want to have most of your time dilation filled before you jump down here because if you run out before you get to the elevator before you land your jump then you can very easily fall past where you're jumping to and if you're on ultra nightmare that'll end your run so uh, when your time dilation is full, the icon will turn blue. Um, just to the left of the health bar there. And I don't know if there's any way I can look that'll make it better, appear better there, but it's there. So we're gonna try and fall here. I'm just gonna push forward a little bit so I don't run into the wall in front of me. And then once I get below this room, then I'm gonna push hard forwards towards the center of that room, once I'm below the room. So I'll do that now. And then when I get close to where the elevator is, then I'll hold the teleport button to slow down time so I can line up the landing and land on the, t on the uh, elevator. So I'm gonna do it now. So I'll just push forward a little bit and fall, and then I'll push forward hard, and then when I get close, line up the arc and land on the elevator. And then we're stuck on this side of the door, but the same thing, just hold teleport, push your gun through into the door, and let go. And then once we interact with this, that's the end of the level. So we just skip the room above us, as well as the first room and the two side rooms. So we completed this level without killing any enemies. You can kill some of the enemies if they get in your way, but like, you don't need to kill any of the enemies in this level. At least on PSVR, there still have to test on PC to make sure if any of this stuff will work on PC VR, but on PSVR, with the aim controller at least, all of this stuff is going to work. Um, I haven't tried it on PSVR with the move controllers or with the DualShock. I assume it would work with the move controllers, but not with the DualShock but I'll have to do some testing with the other controllers as well to figure out for sure. Laser containment system okay, so this part we have to do the laser puzzle. Port. So I teleport out of there and around the hallway to the opposite end from where we started. I tried to go through that well, but it was kind of finicky. I think it wasted more time than it saved. I'll show you, like, so, um, where is it? Yeah, this room with the yellow light operations. That's where we start. Uh, so, if you come around here to where the window is, there's an invisible wall here where this fence is, but you can teleport through that invisible barrier just by moving your controller towards it slightly. And you can teleport right up to the window there. And then this one is another kind of thicker wall. I guess you can teleport into that window spot right there and then teleport through. Hello, Maybe Peters. that's quicker but it takes so uh, like you have to line it up well like the, it's pretty easy to run through the hallway. It might be a little finicky to line up those three jumps to get through the window there I don't know. And then for this part I just hold right to line up the first two then left to line up the next two, and then right to line up the next one. And then, 
press their interact button, which is R3 for this controller. It's gonna activate the portal. I'm gonna fill up my coffee. And then we just have to teleport its feet. It worked. Once you teleport through that portal, you'll arrive at a loading screen, which will take you into the next level. This is where that expedition landed. Now, for this level, be able to scan for the you're supposed to energy profile. go around and find a blue key. Or sorry, you find a yellow key to unlock a yellow door, and then that takes you to another room where you find a blue key to unlock the blue door that's in this room. Uh, but what I like to do, instead of killing the enemies here, I like to just go directly over to where the door is. I'm just going to grab that armor. Oh, I already have lots of armor. Yeah, I, I just go all the way to where the door is here. And I'll just push my controller through until it goes green. And then let go. And then we're at the exit. There's nothing else you have to do in this level to unlock the next level. The only other objectives are unlocking doors within the level. So we're going to continue on to the next level. I think there's two levels left at this point. Or maybe three. No, I think just... I think just two. Yeah, Necrop yeah Necropolis is the second last level. So for this section, there's going to be three skulls that spawn in now. As long as you go past them before they uh, start heading towards you, they're going to stay in there. You don't have to worry about them. This horror, if you kill them, it's going to spawn in a bunch more enemies. So I just run past and teleport past them. I'll let them just kill themselves, basically and just keep going forwards I just hit a ch checkpoint here you can see it's saving and if I go upstairs now and do the same thing just teleport push my controller into the wall let go then you see it's saving again so there's another checkpoint that I just hit there if I go forwards here, you can see there should be some enemies in this room, but they're not going to spawn in. Now, while it's saving, I can't actually scroll through the uh, pause menu here. As soon as it's done saving, then I can scroll. And then, if you load the checkpoint here, if you don't load the checkpoint here, and you keep going through the mission and get to the boss fight, the boss won't actually spawn in and you'll be softlocked, you'll have to load the checkpoint at that point. So it's quicker to just load it right now. As soon as that uh load it, uh, sorry, as soon as the autosave is finished. We're gonna load the checkpoint. And there's gonna be a demon that spawns in the room with us. But we can teleport out of the room through the exit the same way we came into the room. So there's the demon on our left. Just gonna Say a quick hello, come down here, hold teleport, puts your controller through the wall until it goes green, and then let go. And then we're gonna come down here, there's gonna be some more enemies. I'm gonna grab this and vulnerability. Come over here so I can grab that armor, but I'm actually, I have full armor anyway, so. We're just gonna uh, do the same thing over here. Hold teleport, push the controller into the wall until it goes green. Which you can see if I push my face in a little bit, you'll see it go green. And then, just gonna walk through here. There's another uh, weapon upgrade slot on the left. So I'll just upgrade the 
rocket launcher at this point. Here's a bunch of health and armor, and one more BFG ammo, but hopefully you will have saved all your BFG ammo through this level because you'll need it for the boss fight to speed it up. So I won't worry about this BFG ammo here, it's going to interact with this. going to take us to the boss fight arena. Now the first enemy is going to spawn over here in the left corner. Going to take him out. And the next one. And then there's two on the right corner. And then two spawn on top of those pillars. I'm going to do this just with a pistol just to show you that it can be done. Once you kill him, it's gonna spawn in this guy and a couple others. Once you kill this guy, it's gonna spawn in. Or no, I think once you kill all three of these guys, it's gonna spawn in the box. Yeah. So you'll see these pillars go down. If they don't go down, then you didn't uh, reload the checkpoint or you missed one of the waypoints back there. Just load and that for a while. If they do go down, then the boss fight will start. You can't damage him until he roars. You can see his health bar is that big blue bar in the middle of the screen. Not. It's not going down yet until the fight actually starts, until he starts firing at me. So now you can see there's the red on his health bar, so that means I can damage him now. So if I fire one round from my BFG cannon, I'll slow down time, and I'll keep shooting at him, and that's going to deal a lot of damage. So that took down about half of his health. I'm going to go over here and fire one more above his head, so it goes over top of him, and you'll see the beam of energy going from the grenade towards him. And that should finish him off. So I kill him with just two BFG ammos and a pistol. But this is on the easy difficulty. On the Ultra Nightmare difficulty, I used four BFG ammos to take him down with the pistol. Actually, that was on Nightmare, not Ultra Nightmare. But it's the same as Ultra Nightmare. Except you have more than one life. If you die, you get to try again. Without starting from scratch. Okay, so going into the final level here. So there's not many skips left, except uh, one of the other uh, speedrunners showed me one skip for this level, which I was not aware of. So a uh, big shout out uh, to Meta for that. Um, gonna try it out here, hopefully it will work. The Argent accumulator will create a power bubble strong enough to close this portal. And so interact with the terminal, put the Argent accumulator in. Do the same teleport thing here. So hold teleport, push the controller towards the wall and then let go of the teleport button and you'll be on the other side of the wall. Here I'm gonna have my gauss cannon equipped as well as my super shotgun. The control I'm gonna fire this twice fluctuation. and then uh, what is it? Switch uh, to the gauss cannon, hold square and shoot.
And that's gonna spawn in the next wave of enemies there. And now that they're dead, I can use the elevator down here. And now this wall is kind of too thick to teleport through, but I just wait for the door to open. So at this point I'll switch back to the super shotgun. I don't even usually kill all these enemies, I'll just walk directly to the elevator. There's some ammo here if you need ammo, or health or armor. Actually, I, I, I don't really need any armor. I was about to go grab some. So at this point, I guess you can just teleport up here and onto this fence and then get up to there. That's the skip. Or I could have gone to the one that was not on fire. That might have been good too. So big shout out to Meta for showing me that skip. going to be a jump pad on one of these platforms to get up to the top. Nice. Or, oh, the jump pad's not active because we didn't do the thing downstairs, but it should be the jump pad right there. So maybe the skip doesn't work on PSVR? Or, unless I can get it up there directly from here. Oh yeah, that does work. Maybe. Oh yeah, that does work. That was really good. And then from here, I'll teleport across. Oh, here. And then when we go up here, that'll start the final section. You can see it uh, saving now as well. There's an auto save icon. So if you reload checkpoint, uh, this is where you'll be now. So. I just keep fighting the enemies here until uh, the exit opens up. If you grab this berserker, you can just teleport into enemies and they die instantly. Let's use that. I might have grabbed it a bit too early. Okay, now it's gonna turn from red to blue, and when that happens... Oh, it might not be until I kill this guy. Or maybe a couple more enemies. It might be like three of these guys. And then when the elevator, or when the portal turns from red to blue, then I can... Oh, there we go. Then I can interact with this. And the level. And then the game. 
so hopefully going through this step by step kind of explained a bit more how I did all the wall breaks and hopefully you'll be able to replicate them on PCVR as well and let me know how it goes.